All right, Kristen, so I am here a lot nowadays. People talk about, and we do it too, we talk about mindfulness, right? Mindfulness, but it's such a broad term. And I feel like a lot of people out there, you know, hear people say, you know, be more mindful, use some mindfulness, yada, 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 right? But for people that may not know any better, feel confused about that. What did, could you define, like, what is mindfulness or, like, you know, what's a simple, what is mindfulness and what's a way we can be more mindful? Sure. So mindfulness is a super confusing and bad word, um, but it's not confusing. It's exactly what it sounds like it is. It's just being mindful of the behavior or actions that you have. So bringing awareness to something. And there's some really huge medical benefits to it. It's not just some science wooey thing that's going around in the community now, like a, like a fad or something. This actually has some really, really huge scientific uh, work behind it and how good it is for us. For example, one of the benefits of mindfulness, they're showing mindful meditations as increasing the amount of gray space in your brain. And it also has a huge part to do with your happiness levels. So they're finding people who practice mindfulness overall are just happier. So mindfulness is bringing awareness to something in on purpose. And so we can become mindful of a lot of different things. We can become mindful of our posture. We can become mindful of our body use or what we're putting into our mouth, what's coming out of our mouth. We can become mindful of any number of different things. Very quickly, Kristen, you, you said gray space. Would you mind like defining what that is for people who may not know? Yeah, so gray space, the actual amount of matter within your brain that is used for uh, critical thinking skills. So beyond just the organs functioning, of course your brain controls how your organs work. So beyond the control, the automatic controls of your system, gray space is the amount of brain matter used for conscious thought. Okay, so it sounds like what you're saying is that this is more than just the idea of being mindful. It's actually, it's, it's, it's connecting neurons. You're actually changing your brain. Yes. Okay. You are actually creating better connections between the halves of your brain and between parts of the brains themselves and helping to increase uh, the neural co connectivity, which we know is absolutely Im pivotally important with the aging process. Gotcha. Now, I know this obviously because we work together. It, you teach um, classes, right? You work with groups of people, so on and so forth. And a part of your practice in these classes is to teach some mindfulness. Yeah. Would you mind elaborating on that a little bit? I know it involves some meditation and a few other things. Would you mind uh, sharing that experience uh, that you've had with those individuals and then maybe something that you have found from that could be a nice little you know, tidbit for our audience to maybe start their own mindfulness practice. Sure. So I teach a mindfulness practice. There's a lot of different ways that I teach mindfulness. Um, my particular style of teaching Pilates is much more about mindfulness, about knowing where your body is in space, what you're using, and bringing awareness to your breath while doing it. So that's one aspect of it. Rolfing is another aspect in which I teach individuals one-on-one -on -one about mindfulness, helping you become more mindful and aware of different parts of your body. So we systematically go through your system and help you bring more awareness and attention to different parts of your body and how you're using them and what they feel like. But I also teach a breathing meditation at Applied Fitness Solutions. And that breathing meditation, now meditation is kind of a scary word. A lot of us are feel like we're really terrible at it. Well, I feel like I don't have enough time to meditate. <laughs> does, that, does that sound about right for anyone? <laughs> yes, that is something so common that I hear is I don't have enough time. Which there's something fundamentally wrong with that, obviously, and that's why I'm laughing. Uh, what's funny about it is that meditation actually makes you more productive. Yeah. So if we were to meditate more frequently, our time doing other tasks would be more productive. So uh, it, this breathing meditation that I do has different emphasis, emphasis is, emphasize? Whatever, we, we get the point. Uh, different, different attentions to it each class. Each one is a little bit unique, but they're all based in breathing. So helping you to calm your brain down of the external thought processes, which your brain is desire, designed to think, right? Your, mm -hmm. your brain is a connection-making machine. The purpose is to have thoughts. So it, meditation isn't a thoughtless experience. It's just narrowing down to one specific thought. And when other things infiltrate your mind, bringing your awareness back to that one thought. So this comes back all the way around to mindfulness. And when we attach breathing to it, it just gives us something to focus on ex internally versus externally. 
I see. So it sounds like mindfulness and medita uh, meditation is just a way of being more mindful. Mindfulness is just being pretty much aware, sounds like, and being intentional. Um, so then let's, let's end with, so now you understand mindfulness and meditation. Would you mind giving the audience one simple tip for someone who's never, maybe this is the first time they've heard of mindfulness, um, someone that's looking to maybe try meditation or some mindfulness, what is one stupid, simple strategy they can apply right now? Okay, this is going to sound way too easy to be productive and useful, but it is my number one go-to myself. It's what I use the most frequently, and it's the thing that I tell my clients most frequently. And let me interject real quick. The fact that it is like so easy that it seems like it wouldn't be effective makes it effective because there's less resistance to doing it. So yes. sometimes it's the stupid, simple, easy things that make the biggest impact. Yes. So my stupid, simple, easy thing to do is to focus on breathing. Place one hand on your stomach and one hand on your low back and focus on taking a deep enough breath that you can feel the, both your stomach and your back expand with your breath. So this, this is diaphragmatic breathing and it helps to calm down our nervous system. It helps us to become more mindful of things. It helps us to uh, reappropriate how our emotions are responding to things and how our body feels. So it is such an easy thing to do but it has such tremendous real health benefits. Got it. It, um, it what that sounds like to me is that in, in like the really simple terms is the, you're essentially taking your body from this full of distraction and noise sort of fight or flight response. And you're, you're turned on the volume a little bit yes. to maybe more of a rest and digest and kind of chill mode. And it's an intentful way of doing that. Absolutely. We're intentionally using tactile. So using your hands helps to bring another part of your brain into the process. So using your hands to help you refocus your attention onto your breath, that 30 seconds of focusing on your breath can help clear up the next half hour's worth of work. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Kristen. Uh, one thing I'd like to say in there too is that you know breathing is obviously very important. Uh, we're all good breathers because otherwise we'd be alive. Hey, right? Unless so, you have COVID. <laughs> oh God, we don't want to go there, right? But breathing uh, is for oxygenation of the blood first, so we can we can respirate. We can have, we can be alive, right? And then the breathing has another function as well as postural stability, which I talk about a lot, i.e. our core. But then also we have breathing in this manner too, right? So breathing is, is fundamental and there's so, many, there's so many ways, so many benefits to it. And this is just another benefit of how you can use breathing to help with your health and wellness. You know, last final add-on to your add-on. <laughs> we just keep adding on all day if we keep doing it, right? Right, right. So breathing is so fundamental. If you look at the hierarchy of needs in the human system, breathing is really the first and foremost. Your body's posture will adapt to your ability to breathe. So your upper body will curl if it's if that helps you take a deeper breath. And so we all talk about posture and sitting upright, but really we need to focus on breathing more than we focus on anything else. Yeah. So breathing, if we could just optimize how well we were breathing, we would see a chain reaction throughout the system. Our thoughts would get more clear. Our posture would improve. Our ability to emotionally regulate ourselves would change. So breathing, so fundamentally simple, so necessary, so beneficial. I guess we'll just finish it. Thanks for <laughs> Do more than just relieve pain. Be unstoppable. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I'm Dr. R.J. Burr. Kristen Salinas. And we're at Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center, where we believe pain is complex and frustrating. With customized manual medicine and movement coaching, Reach takes the guesswork out of healing. Do more than relieve pain, be unstoppable.